Episode 3, cut content from the Basis UPen. Let's see what he has to say. Another week, another new episode of Classroom of the Elite. Yes. This time with Season 3, Episode 3, which adapts Volume 9. <laughs> the, I, I see that the, the thighs were not nerfed, right? The thighs were not nerfed of, uh, what was her name again? Kamuro? Ka... I forgot. I thought she was Ayatsuzi from Class 1D, but she's not. And surprisingly enough, we're off to a pretty decent start when it comes to card content. Considering this episode, only adapted around 90 pages. Only 90 pages, not 200, which is a, which is a big progress. Which is less than half of what the previous two episodes adapted. Okay. Along with this volume, being fairly shorter in length compared to the previous one, things are honestly looking pretty good. Still, that doesn't mean the episode doesn't have the usual pacing issues and important moments being cut, such as... Ichinose joining the student council. Ari yeah, when did that happen? Like, she's a fucking officer. I'm like, what? Like, oh, it's because, like, the initial scene was uh, Nagumo and I forgot who it was. It was Arisu, right? But then it's like, did you know Honami Ichinose is like, uh, I don't know, fucking student council officer? I'm like, wait, 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 wait what? She was? Okay. Arisu meeting with Kushida, class A. Arisu mate with Kushida. Dude, Kushida is just fucking making deals with every. Fucking person that's against us, man. This bitch. Are we sure we can't just expel her? Why do we have to keep her around? And we almost getting into a physical fight along with Ayan. What? Wait, 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 what? What? And B with Kushida, class A and B almost getting into a physical fight. Who's fighting? Because, <laughs> like, in class B, all we know is each knows his fucking harem and that one pretty boy. In class A, is like Arisu and the Baldies. Who's, who's fucking physically fighting? Probably some NPCs. Along with Ayano Koji stalking Ichinose while he's stalking? the one stalked himself. Conti by Hashimoto, because Hashimoto probably has some notes by Arisu to keep, you know. Hey, fucking just stalk him, spy him. Continue watching the video until the end to know about all these amazing moments. Okay. And comment down below if you have any questions about the episode. And now, without wasting any more time, let's dive in. Go, go, go. So... The episode actually starts with adapting Ichinose's monologue from the first chapter. She says, I'm not good or bad, I'm just Ichinose. But I honestly would have preferred for them to skip it because they did not Why? even keep all the important and interesting parts of the monologue in the episode. Such okay. as parts of Ichinose's backstory and her thoughts during a moment that's going to happen later on, foreshadowing the contents of this arc. Then we get a flashback to the time Ichinose joined the student council, which was completely skipped. Yeah, in when did in this flash? Okay, so I'm not crazy, right? Because like when I was watching this shit and they said Ichinose is in the student council as an officer, I'm like, when the fuck did this happen? They skipped it. Okay, I'm not crazy. Nagumo was still the vice president, and he approached Ichinose after Manabu did not allow her to join the student council. What? Why? Why would Manabu? Prevent her from joining the council. What? What? Maybe she is a criminal, guys. Nagumo here gaslights Ichinose into believing that Manabu will not let her join the council, even if she manages to reach Class A. And wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Manabu won't let her join even if she doesn't reach Class One A. Well, I mean, she already fucking offered Ayana Koji like a spot, and he's in One D. Then again, he's different, but still, what the fuck? This is insane. <laughs> I mean, he he kind of was okay with Susan joining at the end, right? I mean, at the end of season two, you know, he called Nissan and he was like, oh, this would be a good learning opportunity for you. But goddamn, just said no to each. You know, see, that's a hard check. He tells that he himself doesn't care about status and he'll let Ichinose join the council if okay. she tells him her secret. Which he her secret. You know, her fucking Ponzi scheme, her, the crypto scam that she's got going on where she's fucking hoarding all the points or the fact that she's a fucking criminal. What, what is it? was the reason she was placed in class B instead of A. This right? Because like, what is her secret? What is her fault? Because every time this girl's around, we're like, oh, the seemingly perfect character. What's going on with her? Surely everyone has some flaws. What's up with her? Is she really a fucking criminal? Is she doing a Ponzi scheme? Who knows? Despite being basically perfect on all fronts. Ichinose eventually takes up Nagumo's offer and tells him her secret. What is it? Then we move on to Arisu's meeting with yet. Nagumo. And it was way longer in the novel, but the anime only adapts the key points from this conversation. You know what I noticed about the body language of these two Giga Chads? These two blonde Giga Chads, Nagumo and Koenji, 
both have their foot on the table. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, that's the key points from this conversation. Some things I felt were quite important which got cut are Nagumo saying that he's more lenient than Manabu when it comes to physical conflicts and he's willing to let them Basically, if there's fights happening, Nagumo's gonna be like, no, nope, I didn't see anything. You guys settle it yourself? Okay. Slide with just a suspension for a few days. Interesting. Nagumo's conversation with Arisu also hints that he's the one who told her about Ichinose's secret. And even though he told that to Arisu, he doesn't want to. Wait, 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 wait. I, I missed it. I missed it. I blinked out for a second. To let them slide with just a suspension for a few days. Nagumo's conversation with Arisu also hints that he's the one who told her about Ichinose's secret. So he leaked it after fucking Ichinose trusted him. He shouldn't have. And even though he told that to Arisu, he doesn't want Ichinose expelled because he considers her his plaything. What do you mean? What do you mean, plaything? What do you mean? Which you was the reason Arisu informed him hmm? that she may get Ichinose expelled, so she doesn't make an enemy of Nagumo later on. But even though Arisu says that, Nagumo feels like Arisu doesn't fear him at all. And Shouldn't Nagumo like step in and try to like help out somehow? I hope that in this arc of like saving Ichinose. Ayana Koji isn't the one that kind of saves her. It's Nagumo in a weird fucked up way. Wouldn't that be cool? I'd like to get to see more of Nagumo's methods. Right now, seems like it's in Nagumo's best interest to go against Arisu, right? It's, it's, it's this play thing that's on the line after all. I don't know how much he actually cares, but it would be cool if Nagumo was somehow the hero of this arc despite being like a seemingly evil person. And things about how interesting the first years are, considering Ryuan also did not fear him at all. Last thing which got cut from this scene is Nagumo asking Arisu if she knows anything about Ayano Koji. Mm. To which Arisu plays dumb and leaves. Nope, and I on don't the know. Way back, she notices another first year student around the council room, uh -oh. and it's none other than the two faced bitch. Oh, I thought we were gonna talk about fucking Yamauchi for a second. Are we gonna not talk about the Yamauchi scene? Come on! Back, she notices another first year student around yes. the council room, and it's none other than the two-faced bitch Kikyo Kushida herself. She's gone to fucking Arisu and Nagumo now. What is she fucking doing? She just like... People... <laughs> Some people in the YouTube comment section, whenever I like shit on Kushida and say that we can't, uh, uh... We can't trust her anymore. People are like, But! She made a promise, Kaka! She... She made a promise that if, if Susanae won against her in the math exam in season two, that she would listen. I'm like, are you, are you dumb? Are you, what are you, a promise? You think shit like that matters in this fucking show where everyone's just fucking lying like three layers on top of each other? Like, and she's like, I don't trust this bitch at all. But this show keeps including her. And Susanae is actually like the biggest one to like vouch for her. So I'm like, are we actually gonna get Kuki, like Kikyo fucking development or is she just gonna be a backstabbing bitch again that we have to just cut out I I don't know I don't know and like so we're supposedly supposed to get you know Kushida expels so that we drop back to class 1d that was Ayana Koji's that was his like future right he, he said that but you know with Arisu now kind of having her eyes on Yamauchi for god knows what I feel like someone else is gonna get fucking expelled Kushida says that she's thinking of applying to the student council, but Arisu feels like the timing is off, yeah. considering they had just come back from the camp where Nagumo played dirty and almost expelled a third year student for fun. Is Kushida involved in that shit too? Fucking the fucking mountains, dude? And starts thinking that Kushida is way too spotless and uh. starts to suspect her. Yo, Arisu's got a fucking target on Kushida's back now. This is great. We should fucking get her to help us expel her, dude. The classroom scene and Arisu coming in to meet with Yamauchi uh -oh. were pretty much the uh -oh. same, aside from this being the moment where Horikita tells Kyo about the rumors regarding Ichinose. The LN also tells us about the rumors which are being spread, and they say things like Ichinose has violent outbursts, she has a history. Violent outbursts like Kushida, where she just fucking starts curb stomping the rails outside saying, Fuck, I fucking hate you! Of theft and robbery. All right, she's like, uh, she just fucking, you know, shoplifts like the beer cans, like that Kuma Kuromuro Kumoru guy, the girl in the beginning. 
she's engaged in paid dating and hey dating oh she's doing anything for those private points i see last but not least they say that she has a history of drug usage oh Next what kind of drugs i mean these rumors are they're pretty bad the light novel actually kind of went into details man but in the anime the rumors were literally Ichino is a criminal. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Because like a use, like a normal high school drama would be something like, oh, she slept with this guy. Oh, she's using these kind of drugs. Oh, you know, like 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 random bullshit like that. But this one was like, she's a fucking convicted convicted felon. Scene where Kyo is hanging out with his friend group. Here Haruka gets a call from Akito. I assume most anime. All right, I sh I should put in the effort to actually memorize our study group's name because I do know Yukimura Keisei, Hasebe Haruka, Miyake Akito. All I know from Akito is that he uh got injured near the end of the sports festival, which allowed Ana coach to run. So that's a big dub. He's from the archery scene. All right, and Hasebe Haruka. What what does she do? She just she's just the self-proclaimed loners of the club. She has a habit of giving people's nicknames right off the bat. That that that's what basically she does, huh? She just she just calls people something pawn, and she's kind of cute though. The only store know about him, cause the anime cut out all his moments. But he lets the group know that there might be a fight between Class A's Hashimoto and Class B's Kanzaki. And in case anime only store wait 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 whoa 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 he cut out all his moments. But he lets the group know that there might be a fight between Class A's Hashimoto yeah. and Class B's Kanzaki. Ah, the fanboy versus Hashimoto. You know what? I'm not gonna... Uh, I, I think that Hashimoto is gonna win, man. I don't know how... I f Kanzaki just looks like the fucking one of the princes from like an ultimate game, you know? Hashimoto is just a giga chat. These are family after all. And in case anime only stone no Kanzaki, he is Ichinose's right hand man. What does he do though? You know, what, what does he do? We haven't seen anything from him. If we actually got to see a scene where he like, I don't know. Like, why aren't they showing us more violent scenes? Like in, epi in season one, like immediately in episode two, like Manabu fucking tries to palm strike Suzune. Like, why don't you just give me like a 10 second fight of Kanazaki versus Hashimoto just to hype it up? Wouldn't you think that'd be kind of cool? Like 10 fucking seconds. Like, just give me something. It doesn't have to be a crazy fight. I just want to see a scuffle and also had most of his lines cut in the anime. Him and Akito are some really underrated characters, so I'm really sad the anime only won't get to know about them. Akito is actually that good? Akito from the, the purple hair dude? And Akito is there to stop them before something happens. Am, am, am I crazy? Akito the- this dude? He prevents the fight? This NPC ass dude prevents the fight? What? What do you, what do you mean? What? Also had most of his lines cut in the anime. Him and Akito are some really underrated characters, so I'm really sad the anime only won't get to know about them. Okay. And Akito is there to stop them before something happens. What? Hearing this, the whole group comes what? to the scene, and Kansaki is confronting Hashimoto about the rumors going around about Ichinose. Hashimoto first acts like he doesn't know about them and tries to get under Kansaki's skin, but he eventually confesses that he's been going around spreading the rumors about each is that a little bit of spoilers well i don't know i i i wanted to think that maybe you know Arisa kidnapped the yama god and instead of sending him to the gulags immediately he was the one you know spreading the rumors on behalf of Arisa because he's a fucking idiot and i thought it could make sense but okay hashimoto was going around Chinose. however he says that he was not the source of these rumors he's just simply spreading them around yeah, because Arisu is the source of the rumors, right? I mean, there's got to be a leader that's saying... Well, that's not really... Source of the rumors, huh? Source of the rumors. I just jumped to immediately thinking Arisu is the one that's making this shit up, but maybe that's not it. Eventually, they both leave, and Kyo notices Hashimoto acting weird towards him, which was because of what Nagumo said to him at the camp. The next day after classes, Kyo notices Ichino Nagumo probably hyped up Anakoji to Hashimoto Nose, and he follows her and as he's thinking of calling out to her, he notices two different people stalking him. Oh. One of them was Hashimoto and, and the other was Michan. Michan! We got a cool Michan scene. What are they doing with this character? 
Why why are they develop they're, they're developing her this this season? She has a couple scenes in like the mountain arc where she's just talking about Ichinose and Hiyori. Hiyori and Michan actually had a, like, two scenes again. Why why are they putting so much time into Michan? What is the payoff here? I don't know. Michan comes out of hiding and goes in to talk with Ayano Koji and Hashimoto eventually passes them both and hmm. goes towards the dorm. Her talk with Ayano Koji was pretty much the same as the Ellen, aside from one minor difference being that they both go and talk at a cafe and Alan. Kyo also notices Hashimoto hanging around the cafe and becomes sure that he was stalking him. Okay, okay. Moving on, the Horikita and Ichinose scene with Ayano Koji was pretty much the same. Though the moment where Ayano Koji gets a call from the unregistered number Oh, yo, who is this though? The unregistered number ending 4295 and he just picks it up and he just says, Kiyotaka Ayano Koji and just hangs up. I'm like, we have a new fucking stalker? Uh huh? Someone that loves us even more? Number was way more interesting in the LN. Who is in it? In the LN, right after their call, Kiyo thinks that the caller is related to his father and mm. he's trying out another way to get him out of the school. Yeah, I could definitely assume that, but... He also thinks that the caller didn't sound old, so he's most likely a student and wonders just how much power does his father have. Wait, wait, where are we going with this? This school is basically something where we can't, like, dad shouldn't be able to reach us here, right? Well, he can't. He can sometimes show up and try to do some shit, but for the most part, we're here because we're supposed to be isolated from outside contact, but... No, it's not Yamagot on the phone. No fucking shot. But like, if we're now introducing this idea that Anakoji's dad could potentially have fucking assassins <laughs> just fucking, you know, lurking in the shadows, you know, um, in the disguise as regular students at school, suddenly now we're going to have like this revelation of a new faction of group of characters. It's like the double agents, like random fucking NPC characters that you never thought were important. Suddenly they're like white room agents, dude. <laughs> Could you, could you fucking imagine if some fucking NPC character is suddenly like that? Oh my god, I don't know who that character from behind the phone is. And this is all just in a, like a suspicion from Anakoji, right? But, but, if we actually introduce like double agents from the fucking white room, holy fuck, this is gonna get interesting. Moving on to the next day where everyone got the letter about Ichinose, this was also mostly the same aside from a few differences that don't really matter much. And now... You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe they've been hiding Hondo. Maybe they haven't given Hondo actual fucking dialogue lines, but I've shown him in the anime for this specific reason, bro. Hold up. <laughs> Dude. And it makes sense, because they're in class 1D. Who's, who's better to keep an eye out on Anakoji other than, you know, the fucking white room agents in the fucking class 1D, dude? <laughs> On to the final scene of the episode, which was Kamuro Masini. <laughs> wait, 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 I gotta stop memeing around. I gotta stop memeing around. What did they say here? Mostly the same, aside from a few differences that don't really matter much. And now, on to the final scene of the episode. Thighs, ass, yeah, shoplifting beard. The shoplifting beard part was so funny to me. I, d I don't know. Something about the fact that we wanted to confirm her, like her ability or of what she's saying is true. So we just fucking go to a 7-Eleven, make her fucking steal a beer. And it's like, what are we doing? Which was Kamuro Masumi stuff. And I have to tell you guys, as a top 1% and possibly the only Kamuro fan in thighs. existence, I have to thank the director for some really creative and unique shots, which we- But the shots were all in the perspective of horny Koji, right? So did he even pay attention during this fucking meeting or was he just staring at the thighs, which is the perspective of the cameraman? God, during this scene, they really add a lot to the story and I have to automatically give the episode a 10 out of 10 for amazing direction. Now, memes aside, fan service like this is really great for engaging the audience during moments of exposition and just lore dump, right? Eminence and Shadow does this perfectly. I've been realizing there's a new meta happening where, you know, people don't want to just fucking watch two characters just go yap, 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 yap about the fucking plot. But if you suddenly show little titties and ass and thighs during those moments, then suddenly you're a little bit more engaged to what's going on. Doesn't mean it kind of backfires though in Eminence and Shadow because, like, 
I'm not even reading the subtitles anymore. I, the, the plot is long gone. I'm just looking at the fan service. So while it does keep me engaged, it keeps me engaged for the wrong reasons. It was, this was yet another moment that didn't really cut out much and was mostly the same. Where is he looking? Dude, look at his eyes. Like, look at the direction of his eyes and where she's sitting, right? This is not eye contact. He's looking at something below, dude. He's straight up looking at the thighs. Aside from maybe one difference being that, Kamuro being a bit more cold, and well composed during both the Kyo and Arisu moments, yeah. which gives off a somewhat different impression of her character compared to her basically sweating after being confronted by Arisu. This is the funniest shit that like she stole beer and she is like, oh no, this girl with the fucking walking cane is fucking, you know, pressing me. She's she's getting closer. So I'm just imagining fucking Arisu with this fucking walking cane just going like this, just running really fast. And Kamuro's just like, oh my god, like it's out of a fucking horror movie, but. This is an interesting scene where Arisu pretty much claims her first tool. She says that you're gonna be my first friend, but this is more of a first tool, right? Thing after being confronted by Arisu. And that is basically all the cut content slash changes for this episode. A surprisingly decent episode, which I did not expect at all. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Y'all know what to do. Give Baseless Yupin a sub. Like his videos if you did. He always gives us a good summary of things that were cut out from the in the light novel for season three right now but Kamado, this girl i like her design she's a little bitchy she's a little cold she likes the shoplifting i hey these, these are all dubs i guess she's got great thighs but also she's against arisu is she just truly upset that arisu has been working her to the fucking bone and she's tired of having this like blackmail over her so she wants anako to, to like free her which in turn just makes her into another fucking tool like, I don't think she has any idea what she's getting herself into, but hey, it works for us. And not only is there just one girl that is kind of like willing to help us from the inside for class 1A, there's like a second year girl on Nagamo's side that's doing the same shit too. So things are getting really hyped up. And I think the most interesting thing Mr. Baseless Yupen said this episode, okay, Akito being able to fight and break up the fight is fucking insane. I did not think Akito had any level of competence. But it's the fact that there potentially could be double agents from the white room <laughs> sent as spies hiding under the disguise of NPCs such as Hondo in Class 1D from Ayana Koji's dad. Is this actually true? I don't know. I'd like to think it is. If it is, though, oh my god. This shit's gonna get even spicier, dude.